My name is Rossi, and our guest this morning on the Radio City 2 Breakfast Show is a man who I've known since 1993, hailing from the village of Ormskirk, the one and only Mr. John Coshaw. It is fantastic to have a Michael Buffer introduction. <laughs> that is an ambition realized. <laughs> How lovely to see you. How, How lovely, lovely to, see you. to see you and to see you and smell you. You smell fantastic, you do, well, John. Do you know, I don't know what it must be, the Febreze on my blouse. <laughs> like my blouse. <laughs> uh, it's great to see you. You're performing live tonight in your hometown. It's a homecoming gig at the Civic Hall. Yes, indeed. Ormskirk Civic Hall, I remember in 1980 and 81, I, I used to perform with the uh, the local amateur dramatic society there, but I played animals right. in those days, rats and rabbits okay. and back ends of horses and such things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it'll be nice to just go there and speak in my own right today. Uh, well, and you're right and everybody else is right that you right. do. Um, I, I saw a clip of you on, uh, on telly uh, from recently and uh, what is it? What do you think when someone like Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, you think, you must think back of the net. Bingo. <laughs> in a way, in, in a way, you, you think, you know, you think he's a great character, you know, with those hand gestures, with the little pinchy fingers like that. And, uh, you know, look, it's fantastic. It's wonderful to be here in Liverpool. It's so fantastic to be here. I'm very proud to be here. It's so fantastic. So fantastic. <laughs> and, you know, he is a, he is a gift. He's just a, yeah. a character there for, for the taking. Um, but, you know, at the, the same time, you think, oh, my goodness gracious, where is this going to lead us? <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, he's a fantastic character. You know, he's a fantastic character. I talked to Theresa May. She did a, doing a great job, job as Nigel Farage's secretary. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> it's just the show tonight is going to be amazing. Because we've been friends for so long, when I first met John, uh, he was working on a station in Blackpool and I was working on a station in Preston. And and you had you you were slightly more blonde and you had the sort of longerish kind of hair. You looked a little bit like um, like a... Do you remember Ivy Brennan's son in uh, in Corrie? <laughs> Brian Tilsley. Brian Tilsley. Yeah. Brian, he looked. You looked you like know. you were you were his his love child. <laughs> that's cool. I'll I'll take that. I'll you know, take I'll, love, yeah. that, that's all right. I remember. You know, you have the uh, you, the photos taken yeah. for when you work on the radio and and things like this. And I remember having mine taken for uh, for that particular station, and my hair was so long it was like a big huge beige broccoli type affair <laughs> and uh, I didn't notice that I was the same outline as the tree that was next to me <laughs> <laughs> I think the photographer spotted it but he didn't let on just to uh, sort of just keep to that, himself exactly and to keep that humiliation for me uh, it was a great era and you, you, you had a love for radio growing up listening oh, yes. to uh, it would have been Radio City 194 would it exactly with it was. Uncle Norman Thomas God rest yes him. the great uh, Norman Thomas with his with Dibber was it what did he say? Yeah. Shake, yes. a leg. Shake, shake a leg. Shake a leg. Shake a leg. Never yeah. fully dressed with that. Without a smile. smile. Ah. That's, it's wonderful to remember. And uh, yeah, lots of uh, presenters from that time. Yep, Simon Tate, you know, yeah, on, on the weekend downtown. There it is. Oh, and uh, here's Ario Speedwagon. And oh, can't fight this feeling anymore. Uh, <laughs> I think you ended up working with him in that station yes. Blackpool. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. God, it's, 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 it's amazing. On your, your repertoire, just must ex extend and extend and extend as new celebrities come into the forefront. I mean, when I first met you, we hadn't heard of the likes of Simon Cowell, and you do a great Cowell. Uh, okay. Um, look, I, I thought that was a great performance. Um, I think you've both got wonderful voices, great presence, huge likability. I think we could have found something special here. <laughs> I really believe that. And you're saying that and looking at Simo yeah. at the same time. You know, I've got to be nice to Simo because for Lent, yes. I'm not allowed to say anything sarcastic. I'm not allowed to say anything derogative. And is it killing me? Yes, it is. I'm so angry over it. I know how long. I don't know why I've turned into Paul O'Grady at this moment. I don't know where that's come from. I really don't. But uh, how long have you lasted? You know. <laughs> 20 to 8 is the time, Radio City 2, greatest hits for Liverpool, live here, all over Liverpool and the surrounding area. Our guest this morning is the one and only Mr John Coleshaw. You're very good. It's great watching you at work. It really Honestly. is. <laughs> you know, the way, that, that command of the of the desk right there and uh, that's that lovely resonance. Oh. Superb. It's great well, to watch. It, it, really it, is. it is hard to work in the presence of a legend. Well, a I'm legend, feeling that right now. Legend. <laughs> and I'm just referring to Simo here. Oh, yeah, because I'm being nice to her for the Teresa yeah. Lent. We were chatting this. You know what? We're, we're, we're having a chat. And this is like all mates getting together, playing greatest hits and having a bit of banter. And we were talking off air uh, about the time that me and John were out on a thing. It might have been a Sunday afternoon. 
I went had a, a couple of jars, and uh, I got John to phone my mum as Chris Eubank, saying, "Have you got Rossi's number?" <laughs> Yeah, there was. Um, I think this was. Uh, we had we had discussed we had discussed this plan in the um, in the in, in the pub this particular day, and and of course, um, what 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 one said? You asked me to telephone your your mum in order to to get your number so that I could speak to you. <laughs> Gosh, the nineties boxers. Oh, so many great great characters. Brilliant. You had Naz as well. Yes, and uh, let's see how does he go. Um, that is just uh, just four rounds, four rounds, and he's gonna be like took right out of there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've not done that one for a while. No, Bruno, I mean, you had it bang to right. You know, it sort of like happened with the eyes, you know, looking up straight there like that, you know. Very good, um, you know, very good, you know, fight this weekend, you know, with Tony Bellew and David Hay, you know, a lot of talking going on, a lot of bums on seats, whatever. So, you know, good, wishing him professionalism to two of them, you know, getting it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the thing is, when, when, when there's a master, an artist at work, you're supposed to sit there and pay attention. It's not that he's a comedian telling jokes. It's so brilliant. It's unbelievable. It no, it's you're just You're just chilling out, you know, that's cool. You know, that's like wicked. Whoever. I, might, I like this one. I might stay like this permanently. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It really is. We were we were also talking before you arrived this morning. It's not just the voices. It's the isms, uh, all the mannerisms. It's the twitches. It's the dropping of an eye or raising an eye, the curling of the lip. Whatever it is that the person that you do and does you get on to it and you actually, you do become that person, really. Well, I suppose it's true. It, you know, Professor Brian Cox has come to mind and the signal being broadcast by your show from this station would probably, if it travelled at the speed of light, then it would reach the sun in about eight minutes. And then eventually it could reach the Pleiades and other star systems where if there is intelligent life, they would be tuning in to your show years and years and years from now. <laughs> oh, my word. We're only on till 10 o'clock, you know. know. <laughs> We're only on till 10 o'clock. If I had my way, you'd be on that long. You'd miss your show tonight at the yeah. Civic Hall in Ormsky, honestly. <laughs> Look of love, Radio City 2 at breakfast, the greatest hits for Liverpool. Live here, love that song. Great album, Lexicon of Love. I'm sure you would have had that in your record collection. I certainly did, on a, on a cassette from Woolworths. Yeah, from Woolies, 1982, indeed. something like that. <laughs> was indeed, was indeed. Yes. Uh, you still have a love for radio. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing nothing like it. Yeah. Nothing like it. To knit a show together, to uh, you know play the tunes one after the other, do your links in between, knit it all together. It's good for the soul, it really is. It is. John Culture as our guest this morning you've um you you caused quite a stir on the radio back in the 1990s you managed to get through to the then prime minister tony blair <laughs> as um william haig yes indeed william haig with that uh, wonderful uh, yorkshire accent and very uh, monotone sort of accent in that way yes exactly that was uh, a bit of a, a, a fluke <laughs> working with the <laughs> working with the lovely steve pink yeah and um I, I just sort of fashioned a new uh, William Hague impersonation. And um, we said, well, what should we do with it? Why not phone Downing Street? And so, <laughs> as, as well, quite. We, we got the number from Director Inquiries um, and, and just got straight through. And the, the idea of the joke was meant to be, you know, I am, I am the leader of the opposition. Why will you not pull me through? Uh, that is outrageous. You will not put me through to the Prime Minister. But the very nice um, uh, receptionist uh, operating the switchboard said, oh, yes, just a moment. <laughs> what oh, must oh, you have thought? Oh, and you, not you never, expecting in a million years. Yeah, well, just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Except, you know the face that Stan Laurel did. Yeah. With <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> it was very much like that. Um, and then there was a pause, and we're thinking, we, she hasn't gone to, to get the Prime Minister. And Steve Pank was saying, she's gone to get him. She has gone to get the Prime Minister. Pull your words together, you know, get, get your mind on it. And then there was another pause and the lady came back and said, oh, yes, Mrs. Blair's just gone to fetch him from his bedroom for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then there he was, you know, hello. <laughs> you know, that sort of slightly robotic voice of Tony Blair. Unmistakable. As the speech goes on, he gets more and more bombastic, more and more angry pointy finger until eventually he turns into one of the Daleks. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, my word. As I said to you, th- th- we could just take this show on and on and on. I uh, one, one of the finest things that you've done, as well as all of the major personalities, and uh, you get the mannerisms, you get the voice, you, you get the look. Uh, one of the, the, the f- most fantastic things I've ever heard John do was, again, uh, on that particular radio station, he phoned America and... I think you started at the top up in Scotland oh, with your yes. accents and you worked all your way down through Scotland, through the northeast, right down through the, uh, the, the the Lakes District, Cumbria, Lancashire, over to Liverpool, Manchester, right all the way down to uh, St. Ives. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, I do. I do. One I do. conversation and did every accent. So started in one accent and worked oh. his way through every single region. <laughs> It was so very interesting that sometimes it shows the influences that different accents have on each other. For instance, you know, I've always been fascinated by um, the the travels that went on between Ireland and Liverpool. Yeah. And, you know, if you sort of like consider the Dublin accent like that, you know, like, you know, it's not too far before you get to the Liverpool accents. And it makes you wonder how much of an influence, you know, there was between the two, you know, and I I think that, you know, the neighbouring accents like that. And that was one of the things that came from it. Yeah. The similarities in the tune of accents that you can have amazing you've got you've got these these ears that hear things that other people can't you can do things that other people can't Might be sound like a bat (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm trying to be nice to simo and you mention a bat and i was just about about, uh, you know what i'll I'll swerve that i'll continue to uh, stick with my lent regime and be nice to simo uh, tonight, John Coleshaw, you can see him at the Civic Hall in Ormskirk. In Ormskirk. Oh, Ormskirk. Yes. I've still got him stored in my phone for some reason as Mother Ormskirk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that came about. No. Um, it's always a lovely thing. Whenever you sort of give me a greeting, it's always a big hug and hello, Mother Ormskirk. It's, it's very, very heartwarming when you do that. <laughs> John Coleshaw, thanks very much for taking time out and uh, coming all the way from Ormskirk. Yes, to the Radio City well. 2 Tower. It is great to see you. Have a fantastic gig tonight. And uh, maybe Thank you'll you. do our little Rossi's Riddle uh, just after half eight this morning. Oh, yes. Run for that. yes, I'd love to. I would Thank love you very to. much. Ladies and gentlemen, John Coachaw, oh, the one and only. Thanks Thank you so for much. having me. What a joy to be with you. It really is. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. It's Radio City 2.